We have two of the most exciting dinosaurs discovered in the last 10 years from by far the most exciting dinosaur site in America ever. We found a stegosaurus skeleton right next to this individual allosaurus. This is the first time these two species have ever been found together in, in the ground. And this was extremely exciting. And this is the first evidence of these two animals being found together, like in the Disney movie Fantasia, where you find the stegosaurus and the allosaurus fighting. So this is the first time you have this, this kind of documentation. Each of these dinosaurs alone is spectacular. These are really iconic dinosaurs and they are rarely seen and they are, you know, there aren't that many of them in museums. My name is Henry Galliano. I'm one of the owners of Dinosaur International. My partner, Raymond Albersdorfer, uh, and I have been digging the Dana Quarry. The history of Dana Quarry is started quite uninteresting. Uh, the rancher who owns the land, he just found a few bones some 25 years ago and wasn't too aware of the significance of this find until he got in touch with another paleontologist who actually understood hey, what might be in this mountain. So the rancher started to try to find somebody who could open the site and research the potential of the quarry. Hey. And then some, what is it Henry, hey, four years ago? We started in 2006 and we opened it up to expose as much as possible to appraise the quarry, the contents, to see how rich it was. It's a lower Morrison formation locality and those are extremely rare. So these are like dinosaurs older than the classic ones we know like Apatosaurus and Diplodocus and Stegosaurus. And the quality and the preservation of the dinosaurs preserved there is, is outstanding and way above any Jurassic locality in North America. So in addition to it being an older time period unknown to scientists, it is also preserving the best specimens ever, ever seen in paleontology. Maybe you have to understand a little bit about the paleogeographical situation of Dana Quarry. Eh? That was like an Augsburg River with not a big current anymore. Eh? And during a big drought or certain catastrophic event, many dinosaurs were attracted by the little water still remaining in that kind of a pond. Eh? And the big giants came there, tried to drink water, tried to reach into this hole and uh, slid in and just couldn't get out anymore out of the mud. Eh? So dying there, they attracted predators. Predators came, hey, jumped on these big carcasses, started feeding on them, but themselves couldn't get out anymore. So they all got stuck together, hey, nobody could take parts away. So what we have is an assemblage of all different kinds right. of dinosaurs, hey, caught together in time, and they're all more or less complete. Hey. It's also reminiscent of Rancho La Brea tar pits in California, where there was a predator-prey chain reaction event, where the death of the prey was attracting carnivores like the wolves and saber cats and things. And so there is a complete record of, of the animals that lived in that area at the Dana Quarry, like you, you get in, uh, in Rancho La Brea. The discovery of uh, the Stegosaur and the Allosaur started actually with the discovery of the Allosaur. Hey? That was the first specimen we found of this unique find here. And it, I will never forget, hey, it was in spring of 2007. Hey. All of a sudden, hey, they found a femur, a leg bone of that size within an hour. Hey. It was so brilliantly preserved. Hey. It was in soft matrix bone, a beautifully preserved leg bone of that allosaur, hey, which had this beautiful dark patina, hey, which was un almost uncrushed. Yeah. Yeah. And then it continued, yeah. you know. Yeah. We found the next claw, a beautiful claw, rare to find here. Hey. Foot bones. We found uh, other elements of the hand, and it continued right away into the body. Here, ribs appeared, words appeared. Here, so there was not a long time. Here, we were afraid of what we had. Here, so we almost immediately knew. Here, this is an unbelievable, an right. we unbelievable. Were very, thing. very excited. It's yeah. so rare to find a, yeah. an allosaurus skeleton. And the, and the whole crew, everybody wanted to dig the same place, you know. Right. So they started from all over, from all sides, you right. know, yeah. to all approach them, and they all found something here. So right. we really, you know, came from all sides and just took maybe a week yeah. until we had almost all of the elements of yeah. Dracula. And but power. one of the things we but did, yeah, was we, then, we made up huge jackets yeah. and because we were so intent on, on, on careful excavation. We left in the ground these gigantic jackets to bring back to the lab. And there is where the big surprise was. Underneath all these leg bones and ribs and words, hey, they found a tooth. Hey? Right. And they found a second tooth. And they, they found a third yeah, and yeah, a yeah. fourth, you know, and they were all in a row. Hey? And then they started to dig higher, hey? and there was another tooth from the other side. Hey? So we already knew hey, this is a jaw, hey? and yeah. the thing must be complete. Hey? Yeah. yeah, and that's the result. Hey? Yeah. And I mean, this, this is, is a copy now, but 
This is an original reproduction of the skull of Dracula, the most complete allosaur skull ever discovered. One of the most interesting uh, things about this specimen is that it's dentally complete, far exceeding the quality and preservation of other specimens. And because of that, we can now tell which teeth go in what sockets. Most allosaur skulls are edentulous, meaning no teeth, and this one has a complete set of teeth. And that's, that's a critical aspect. And also, all the bones of the skull are articulated. Normally, when allosaur skulls are found, they're in, in a pile. They're not usually found together. And this one was completely articulated. In addition to the surprise of finding the, the skull, there was a second... Oh, that's right. There was a second right. surprise. Yeah. There was even just <laughs> greater than finding this was we found a stegosaur skeleton right next to this individual allosaurus. And both of them were skeletons, so one wasn't washed in. They died there together. There is a big chance that they really actually fought each other. They are both armored. The stegosaur has these huge spines on the back, you know, which is easily able to kill an allosaur. The allosaur has these huge teeth, hey, which are easily uh, able to, to, to kill a stegosaur. Hey, and they were really actually mingled in between each other. Hey. We found the humerus of the stegosaur right next, almost within the mouth, of the allosaur. Mm -hmm. So we just don't know how they died. We haven't been there by then. Hey? But there is a chance that they really yeah, killed each other. Huh? The unique chance of this fighting pair for a museum is obviously to attract a, a broad uh, variety of, of, of visitors. Huh? A modern museum cannot afford to have a single specimen standing there bragging, oh, this is rare. Nobody's interested in that. Mm -hmm. What a modern museum needs is a story. It's something that is alive, that is powerful, that is fighting, that is killing. That's something that's attractive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are natural history museums, they have to compete with all other kinds of entertainment. And they cannot just present rare things. They have to present something that is alive. Mm -hmm. And out of these two specimens, you can make an iconic, dramatic display which really reaches out to a broad mm -hmm. variety of visitors here. And it can be an icon, and real, yeah. an icon. Every museum today needs an icon that is understandable for the broad public. Here. And because Allosaur and Stegosaur is so famous as having been living together here, you know, through this film Fantasia, Fantasia yeah. I think hey, this could, and, and, and it is unique. Hey. This was never found before. Hey. No museum had the chance to create something like that. This is brand new, this has a high potential, and this can really be the iconic draw of, a, of any big, huge, world-class natural history museum. Great potential, not only in visitorship, but also in research potential. Oh, because, that's the next thing. Yeah, right. so you, you, you sort of like satisfy everything in this exhibit with the museum. To privately own a dinosaur is normally something that is just impossible here because you won't have the space. But if you want to have something that is beautiful, that is absolutely spectacular, that is iconic, and that fits in your entrance hall or if you have a corporation, you know, a lobby or whatever, hey, these two dinosaurs you can, you can put in a reasonably small spot here. Small I mean, area, yeah. Small area. I mean, and if they are positioned in an interacting uh, 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 combination, they can really be put in a, in a very, very reasonable spot. And that's mm -hmm. something that is just absolutely unique. Hey. You mm -hmm. may have the world full with, with Van Gogh and with Picasso, say, you may have, you know, the most rare sculptures in your living room here. But who has two dinosaurs and yeah. such a dinosaurs, unique pair yeah. of dinosaurs? Absolutely yeah. unique pair of dinosaurs, you know, privately in his house.